how to overcome blood pressure problems totally naturally. In this video, I'm gonna tell you. My name is Dr. Story. I've been a chiropractor for over 25 years. I'm gonna give you realistic advice based on my experience and based on the scientific literature. Now, I help a lot of people through natural methods. I do not give them drugs. If they want drugs, there's a whole other profession that can give them that. Anytime a person gets high blood pressure, there's more than enough doctors in your community to hand out the drugs like candy at Halloween. So it's very simple. However, changing a person naturally can be quite difficult. Now, let's assume that you do not have the one thing that you're Gonna, it's gonna stop you from achieving your goals, and that is bad genetics. Some people are just, quite frankly, uh, they have bad genetics. They have had high blood pressure all their life. They genetically run high. Now, there is some controversy over whether we should lower what's actually natural for them, but that's, that's gonna be the topic of another video. But let's assume that you do not have any genetic predisposition towards having high blood pressure, but you wanna lower your blood pressure naturally. Now, there's kind of a three-step process, and I'm gonna go through them with you right now. And if you wanna take notes, get a pen and pen, pen and paper handy, because let's just get into it. So, number one, the main thing that you have to change is your diet. And there's lots of uh, diets out there, obviously. And if you watch any amount of YouTube, you will find on this side of the equation, you have the people saying you should become a total organic, um, vegan, uh, plant-based. And then on the other side of the equation, you have people saying you should eat 90% of your um, diet full of fat. Or then you have people up here saying you should just eat meat, the carnivore diet. And then there's people down here saying you should just eat this or that. And it's quite frankly very, very confusing. But when it, when it, when it boils down to this, is there probably is a right diet for you. There is no diet that actually says eat more crap. Although, <laughs> there is, at least I know one guy on the internet and I don't wanna start a fight with this guy because he can come after you. But uh, there's some people that say you should eat nothing but uh, processed sugar and it's actually okay. Maybe. But you know what? The proof's in the pudding. And one of the great things about diet is you can experiment with different diets and I'm gonna tell you what I think a person should follow statistically and the research does support it, and I'll tell you in just a moment, but if you try a diet and it doesn't affect your blood pressure at all, no hard feelings, don't worry about it, just try a different diet. So if you wanna try the carnivore diet and just eat you know, 72 ounce uh, porthouse steaks or something like that, sirloin steaks, or you wanna try a keto diet and eat the majority of, you know, you're eating olive oil and avocados and, and butter all day, go to it. You can experiment with different diets. There is no right diet. There is a right diet for you, and you just need to figure it out. Now, statistically though, what should you change your diet to? I kind of like the zone diet as well as the Mediterranean diet. And when you name these diets, all of a sudden it gets emotional for people, but the truth of the matter is that the Mediterranean diet and the zone diet really overlap, I'm gonna say by 99%. And the research on these diets is fairly clear because they're so simple. They're easy to do, they allow you to eat the foods that you wanna eat, um, and they're, they just work. And so if you can follow a Mediterranean diet, which consists of you know meat that is has low saturated fats, um, fish, uh, chicken, you know, some limited beef and, and stuff like that, that's low in saturated fats. You can eat a lot of olive oil, avocados, so you're getting all those good fats. It's high in omega-3s. And that is only a small portion of your plate. The remaining amount of your plate is very colorful vegetables. So quite frankly, it's kind of boring, but the thing is is that that's just the reality is you have to change your diet. Now here's been my experience with people changing their diets. If you're eating a crappy diet and you change to any diet, it doesn't even matter what the diet is, it's gonna have an effect on your blood pressure because you're going from a crappy diet to anything else. 
You know what's interesting about the carnivore diet and the keto diet and the vegan diet and the vegetarian diet and the Mediterranean diet and the zone diet and the Atkins diet? None of them are telling you to eat processed foods and sugars. Isn't that fascinating? So they actually somewhat, I'm going to say, are more similar than they are different. One could also say, why can't we just all get along? So number two, the main thing that you need to do is you need to get off your tush and start exercising. Now the question is, what kind of exercise should you do? Well, if you've previously been eating a crappy diet, you shouldn't go out and run marathons or ride your bike 100 miles, but it would be a good idea to start. And so what you want to do is walking is the number one easiest exercise you can do. If you can walk really, really fast, not running, it's going to be a lot easier on your joints. Now, if you want to make it interesting, start cycling, swimming, rowing, anything like that. Cardiovascular exercise or endurance training where you sustain a certain heart rate for a period of time is going to have better results for you with your blood pressure than heavy, extreme weightlifting. So if you go into the gym and you do three sets of 10, that isn't going to do a whole lot for your blood pressure. But if you were to go on a treadmill or a rowing machine or a bicycle or just walking for 30 minutes and you do it consistently, you'd be surprised how much of an effect that has on lowering your blood pressure. Now the third and final thing that you can do to lower your blood pressure is simply this. You have to lower your stress. It is insane how stressed and tightly bound people are and they walk around with their shoulders up to their ears all the time. It would be beneficial for you to learn a technique on how to on a daily basis lower your level of stress. There's many chemical reasons why this occurs um, and we're not going to go over that in this video but if you can learn to do deep breathing exercises, lower your stress levels, and do it on a daily basis. It's almost like brushing your teeth on a daily basis. You know, brushing your teeth once really doesn't have that big of an effect on your teeth, but brushing your teeth every day, it actually does. It's the same way with breathing, and this is the biggest misconception is, well, if I breathe and I lower my blood pressure, how long does it last? Well, it doesn't last that long, but if you do it repeatedly for every single day, for years, it has an amazing effect, not only on your blood pressure, but your overall sense of well-being. So these are the three things that I would recommend that you do to naturally lower your blood pressure. You are so old that you remember when rainbows came in black and white. <laughs> uh, yay! That's funny.